Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joe's Metal Man Cave Vlog. Today we're going to do something quite a bit different. We're going to talk about no metal music at all. I know, what? Well, this is a video I've wanted to do for months, literally months now, but I just, uh, I guess I just had to wait for the feeling to be right, and I guess the feeling is right today. So today we're going to do an entirely punk and hardcore collection update. I know what you're thinking, punk music on a metal channel? Well, hold on a second. I have known about and been aware of punk music going all the way back to my very early, like, listening habits, I guess you could say. Back in 92, 93, somewhere around there, I had three cassettes. Those three cassettes were Skid Row's Skid Row, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, and the Ramones, self-titled Ramones album. And you would have thought, you know, hearing punk music at a very impressionable age like that, I would have continued exploring, um, you know, punk music more, but as the 90s progressed, I just didn't, and I don't know why. I think it was just because I was more interested in, you know, under or heavy metal at the time, and just, you know, other music that was more popular at the time, that I just never really explored punk. But uh, even so, throughout the 90s and throughout my teens, I heard bands like the Dead Kennedys, Misfits, um, Sex Pistols, all that kind of stuff, and I enjoyed it. I remember thinking back then, like, I want to explore this more, but I just didn't. And then, <laughs> flash a few years forward, I think it was maybe... 16 years old, this older kid who was a metal guy, he then told me, like, you can't listen to punk, that's, that's, that's not, you know, that's not true, you can't listen to that stuff, and being, you know, again, an impressionable age, and an older kid who I guess I looked up to in this case, he convinced me at an early age, he's like, yeah, I should listen to punk music, I should just listen to metal, and, you know, it, a lot of regrets there, but, damn it, man, <laughs> I wish that had happened. So then, you know, go back to the early 2000s then, and um, this was back in the time frame when I was buying a lot of used vinyls back then. You could find used vinyls for like 4 to $7 each. And back in 2003, I came across this album, the, the one and only album from the Sex Pistols, an OG pressing here, and I really liked it. I was, so 2003, I would have been like 22 years old. I mean, I, I really, I remember thinking back then too, I was like, man, I really need to like start getting the punk music, but again, it just didn't happen. And then several years passed, I mean, obviously, through all those years, I was more interested in metal underground, black metal in particular, and then um, about four years ago, I had a co-worker at a job, and he was really, you know, like, punk was his number one thing, and he started getting me going on some of these bands. I started digging deeper, and then I was like, you know, I've really been missing something here. And I realized, you know, and I started to see, like, those connections that, like, you know, like, the early pioneering hardcore punk bands had, and their connection to, like, thrash metal and eventually to, like, even death metal. And it was, it was very fascinating. And then I finally started going down that rabbit hole of punk music, you know, going all the way back to, like, the, the mid to early 70s scene, like, the Pioneers and, you know, the more uh, popular bands that came in the late 70s, and, of course, you know, a little more, sort of more uh, aggressive bands, the hardcore bands that came in the early 80s, and I was like, man, I really like this. And... Basically, ever since then, I would officially call myself a punk fan. I've been digging deeper and deeper, just always trying to find more old bands. But as it is, I haven't really bought a lot of you know physical goods just yet. So that's sort of the point of this video is I wanted to share just some of the stuff that I've bought in the past six months. And you know, if you like punk music or if you have a, a story to tell about punk, punk music, I'd love to hear about. So let's get into it. Punk. Huh? God, I hate punkers. All right, before we even get into it, I want to dedicate this episode to my buddy Joel and his online radio station, High Anxiety Radio. Check it out. Very good punk and hardcore uh, online radio. You can stream. Uh, he has guests from around the area and just the scene in general. A really cool radio show. I've been checking it out a lot and really been enjoying it. So this is for you, Joel. I hope you enjoy this. You better fucking watch it. <laughs> so to kick things off, let's talk about the Subhumans and their album, The Day the Country Died. So the Subhumans are a UK anarcho-punk band. Uh, anarcho being basically uh, anarchist punk. And anarchist punk, as it is, is sort of a subgenre of punk music. But uh, musically speaking, it's not too far removed from your typical punk band. But uh, thematically, it you know re revolves around uh, anarchist themes and sort of uh, you know kind of like. Uh, pushing for a change in society, and that's, you know, obviously uh, really a change or a, a, a common theme of punk music in general. Very, uh, 
lots of political comment or social commentary, political commentary, that kind of thing. That became uh, very much a staple of you know punk music right from the get go. But uh, the Subhumans and along with bands like Crass, they were and Discharge, they were bands that really kind of pushed that more anarchist kind of you know movement and feel into the punk scene. So the Subhumans debut album was originally recorded in 1982, released in 19, uh, released in January of 1983, and this was you know one of those albums uh, and this bands I came across like three four years ago, really dug, but I didn't buy this vinyl till like I don't know three four ah three months ago maybe, and once I got the vinyl, let's do it again. I was like, dude, fuck yeah, man. So like, uh, you know the thing about punk music really, if you have to compare it to like you know metal, is that like it's a much more simplistic affair. But, you know, when I stopped and really thought about it, like, a lot of the, you know, like, black metal is a simple affair. It just has, you know, a lot of layers more so than, like, punk music. And, like, what I, I mean, I think above all else is just, it has good energy. It just, uh, it really energizes me and gets me going. And, I mean, that's, you know, the lyrics, and, you know, all that's kind of secondary to me. But it, it's still interesting hearing um, social commentary, I guess, or whatever, and political kind of stuff. I mean, I'd always said for years that I hated, you know, political lyrics, or I just hated politics in general, but, you know, we've, you know, now these days, like, politics and all that kind of stuff is so forced down our throat, and there's just so much going on that it's marginally become more interesting for me to kind of pay attention to politics, but usually, whenever I do, I just get pissed off because I know nothing will ever change, and it's just going to fucking get worse. So yeah, the Subhumans. Uh, this is a fantastic album. There's so many good songs, and there's just the 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 melodic characteristics are minimal, but you know, there's still some very catchy parts. It's just that energy in that, you know, that, that, that sort of I don't know if hatred is the word used in, in terms of uh, Subhumans, but you can definitely feel like the emotions are strong in this. And there's so many good songs like All Gone Dead, uh, Mickey Mouse is Dead, uh, uh, no, where the hell is it on here? Something about religion. Uh, I don't need, I don't, I don't know, man, I'm thinking of some other album, this isn't going well, but <laughs> whatever. Great fucking album, man, I really love it. So what we have here is a reissue, of course, here, uh, this is, uh, released by the band's old Blurg Records, yeah. But the album, as I said, was originally released in, uh, 19, in January of 1983. So we got lyrics inside of there. Then, uh, the vinyl's pretty fucking slick looking, I thought. It has this sort of, uh, I don't know what you want to say smoky gray kind of feel to it but yeah man really really cool stuff i uh bought this from the ground zero salem uh, distro which uh some of you in the vc would probably know that's pat um started the distro maybe six months ago and basically through his distro he sells like punk and hardcore and um grindcore some black metal and old school death metal it's a pretty cool distro it's small but he's definitely grown so shout out to you pat you probably watch this whatever something you've ever watched any of my videos but whatever shout out to you anyway and uh anyway that's the subhumans the day the country died all right continuing on we're going to talk about broken bones and their compilation album a single decade so broken bones was formed in 1983 by some then ex-members of discharge and discharge in case you don't know is more or less considered the first hardcore punk punk band, a band that helped spawn a whole new style of punk, a more aggressive and angry version of punk, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, this is some ex-members who left the band after uh, this band's second album in 1983. Uh, Broken Bones is, you know, kind of a, a more, you know, hardcore and a little bit more metallic sounding band. That's something I instantly liked about them. Uh, so this compilation gathers together Three seven-inch records and one twelve-inch record. You know, it's it's a compilation. So you get uh, the decapitated seven-inch, the crucified seven-inch, seen through my eyes, and the never say die twelve-inch record, all on this uh, compilation album here. And it seems the CD has some additional tracks as well. So maybe that's the better option in this case. But uh, this is really good stuff. I mean, it has you know a lot more, very energetic, you know, very angry sounding, and I mean it's. There's just, there's something special about early 80s hardcore punk, man. It's just, it's so aggressive and just, you know, uh, you know, if you like, like, you can see the influence it has on thrash metal, or you can kind of see even that influence in, like, Motorhead or something like that. It's, it's always been really fascinating to me just, you know, discovering that roots of stuff. And then, you know, like I said, you know, uh, just kind of seeing the roots of punk, then seeing, you know, in a lot of ways, just like the roots of, you know, thrash metal is the roots of all extreme metal, really. So it, it's interesting kind of seeing, like, you know, this is kind of where thrash metal started, too. It started with hardcore punk, like. And I think that's, that's just really cool, I think, you know, realizing that all these years later. 
And it's not like I haven't said, you know, heard that before. Like I certainly, you know, read interviews 20 years ago or whatever. Where people were like, oh yeah, you know, we uh, were initially influenced by Discharge and all that other hardcore punk. But it just it never really resonated with me, I guess, or whatever. You know, it's kind of weird. So anyway, there's the front cover of this. It has this really cool uh, old band photo here. Very cool. And uh, another band photo in the back there. I really dig like that old school like that punk look and you know again you kind of see kind of similarities to like that a lot of early thrash metal and death metal musicians had you know you had the bold belt the ripped jeans the vest with patches I mean the only real difference here is that these guys don't have long ass hair they have spiky hair I mean but you know it, 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 I don't know again just interesting seeing those connections I guess so there's that again you know and then we have a little bit of a insert here which uh no we don't have an insert in here it's uh right here actually where is it? Come on. So there's the insert. You can see uh, the selections that are on this L LP uh, taken from uh, those four other LPs, of course. And then we got some lyrics here, and then uh, the vinyl itself is just a standard black vinyl this time around. No fancy smoky gray or whatever the other one was, but nevertheless, very cool. And yeah, man, a few of, uh, you know, you know, this is a perfect example. Like, if you don't dig, like, the more normal, straightforward punk sound, definitely Definitely look up stuff like Broken Bones because there's a more metallic and more aggressive, just angry and just... It rules, man. Broken Bones. Alright, continuing on, we're going to talk about another compilation. This one comes from The Exploited and it's called The Exploited 1980-1983 four-disc box set. So The Exploited, much like the other bands I mentioned, were from the UK, although The Exploited is from Scotland, whereas the other two bands were from England. And uh, you'll notice pretty quickly once you start uh, kind of going down the punk rabbit hole that a lot of the bands and the best bands that ever came out of the genre all came from the UK and in particular England. But uh, The Exploited is for sure one of the best. Uh, again, uh, The Exploited was another band I had not come across until about three or four years ago when that co-worker showed this to me. And I was like, god damn, man, how have I been missing out on this my whole life? Like, this is really, really good. So this compilation gathers together the band's uh, first three albums, Punk's Not Dead, Troops of Tomorrow, and Let's Start a War, said Maggie One Day, with the fourth disc being basically a collection of singles. So you get some overlap here, and I, I don't know, there's also some newer songs in this singles collection, but it seemed kind of weird to have the same songs that were from earlier albums already present here, but whatever, <laughs> that's what they did. So. I found this compilation, oh yeah, probably about six months ago at a secondhand store. It was only 20 bucks and I was like, I wanted to get these albums anyway, so I was like, fuck yeah. But uh, yeah, this is awesome. So, uh, The Explains music uh, over the years has evolved because they've had quite a revolving door of musicians over the year with the only mainstay being their vocalist, uh, Waddy or Waddy, I don't know how you pronounce it, probably Waddy because he's Scottish, you have to say it in a real strong Scottish accent. Waddy, or that wasn't good. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> the explain. So Punk's Not Dead is their first album, and it shows a much more, I guess, straightforward punk sound. It sounds like it was really influenced by the Sex Pistols and all that kind of more late 70s kind of stuff. Whereas Troops of Tomorrow and Let's Start a War said Maggie One Day are much more hardcore punk, you know, again, influenced by Discharge and that other early, uh, yeah, you know, more aggressive punk stuff. Um, whereas down the road, I guess the band would kind of evolve a bit as, you know, the revolving door of band members continued to go. They went more of sort of a crossover thrash style later on. I believe it's more or less a style they continued on throughout the years. And uh, they released their last album back in 2003, and it was, yeah, you know, crossover style. But even though it's been over it's about 20 years since their last album, they still continue to tour to this day and are still very much active. So. Who knows, maybe they'll put out a new album one day, but uh, anyway, if you've not heard the Explain, this is definitely a great uh, little collection to pick up as you get, uh, you know, what I would probably consider to be the cream of the crop of their discography. I've listened to the other stuff, and it's good, but this is where it's at, man. This is this is the fucking shit, man. So, uh, there's their first album, and, you know, I think I dislike about uh, compilations like this, especially as they come in these... Uh, uh, you know, slim line cases or whatever they call them, cardboard cases. You don't get all the original artwork, and that that kind of sucks in that regard. But obviously, the important thing is here you get all the music. Yeah, Trips of Tomorrow, man. This is what's playing in the background, and this is for sure their bona fide classic. But fucking great stuff, man. And then there's this whole big booklet here with just you know a lot of uh, old photos, lyrics, and. Recording information, uh, you know, all, you know, just, you know, various notes and thoughts from journalists know itself, some old school photos, you know, again, they've got had a cool classic punk look to their stuff. 
More stuff, yeah. This song right here, alternative, fucking great song, man. I love this stuff, man. Yeah, just these guys, these guys are just, you can really feel the hatred, just, oh, that aggressive, rebellious energy is so present in Exploited, man. This is great stuff, man. So if you never heard Exploited, definitely change that. I mean, this is another band that I'm 100% sure, you know, helped influence thrash metal and later on death metal. I mean, this fucking rules, man, Exploited. Alright, one more for this punk and hardcore collection I'm thinking. If you stuck around, you better believe I appreciate you. So the band in question here to close this thing out is anti -Symix. So, anti -Symix was a Swedish hardcore band. Yeah, Swedish now. Um, anti -Symix is named after a well-known Swedish pest control company called anti -Symix, which I guess means uh, just against uh, bed bugs. And uh, I'm not sure if it's meant to be like uh, sort of a rebellion against this company. Like maybe they were using some really sketchy poisonous chemicals that were polluting the earth. I mean, th that's my guess, but it doesn't seem to be uh, exactly clear why the band named themselves after this company. So this cassette tape here, uh, as far as I can tell, was originally released. Well, not originally, but originally this was released. This gathers together uh, three seven inch records from the early 80s and originally these were of course released as seven inch records but uh, this compilation here was originally released as like sort of a seven inch box set and I honestly couldn't seem to find any information about this cassette tape here so I'm suspecting this is a bootleg but whatever you nevertheless get this uh, music and that's what's important here so anti -Symix, uh these three uh, seven inch records here are the anarchist attack the raped ass seven inch and the victim of the bomb raid uh, seven inch all released originally in 82, 83, and 84. And uh, anti Symix was a band that existed from, I guess, about 1981 to 1993. And these early singles are perhaps not the best representation of this band. Uh, some of the stuff that they made later on, uh, like the Absolute Country Sweden album or Made in Sweden album, are uh, much more aggressive, much more angry, but just like in frenzied energy that just really gets you charged up listening to us. But this stuff uh, sort of represents a more lo-fi version of the band, I guess you could say, but nevertheless, still really good. Um, my interest in anti symix kind of stemmed from the fact that a lot of the early Swedish death metal bands like Entombed and Dismember um, referenced uh, these guys as being a big influence to them, you know, you, and when you listen to this, you can you can kind of see how this stuff ended up, uh, you know, influencing that early de uh, Swedish death metal scene. Of course, uh, anti symix themselves were influenced by Discharge, uh, you know, again, we go back to Discharge as, as being the you know, the big uh, beginning points of all this more hardcore punk stuff, but yeah, anti symix definitely takes a cue from them, but, you know, seeing how these guys were uh, from Sweden, they definitely uh, influenced a lot of young uh, Swedish death metal musicians in the late 80s and early 90s, and it, it, it's, you know, like, again, it's just cool, it's it's interesting seeing that connection. So there's the front cover there, and the uh, back cover here, I suppose I should take the cassette tape out, show ya. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a bootleg, I mean, it looks... Pretty fucking DIY, but I mean, DIY is punk as fuck anyway, right? That's how it's that's how it's supposed to be, you know. Just get the music out there any way possible. So, yeah, man, uh, really cool stuff. But as I said, this you know is perhaps maybe not the best representation of this band. You can definitely go for the Falling Thumbs, which are really aggressive, really just fucking killer stuff. So hopefully, I'll have a, uh, another collection update in the future talking about that stuff. Anyway, anti slamming all right, guys, well, thank you for joining me for this punk and hardcore collection update here. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, as I said in the beginning, if you like punk music or if you like that old school hardcore style, I'd love to hear your story about, like, you know, the bands you've gotten into over the years or how you got into it or just if you're like me, you just avoided it for years and then one day discovered that, like, hey, this is pretty cool stuff after all. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time on Joe's Punk... Uh yeah, Joe's Punk Throne. Let's call it that. This is Joe's Punk Throne. This ain't Joe's Metal Man Cave for this video. We'll see you next time on Joe's Punk Throne.